Texas lawmakers say they took a major step today to rein in property tax growth in the state. But officials from our local government say the proposal cuts into their budgets too much and could put public safety in jeopardy. Senators approve Senate Bill 2, which now heads to the Texas House. It will require an election if any city or county grows its budget over 3.5 percent. For school districts, the number is 2.5 percent. It does not apply to smaller counties and cities with budgets less than $15 million per year. KXN's political reporter Phil Prazen takes a closer look today at the procedural moves underway and the threat of a nuclear option. This is something Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has pushed for since he was a radio talk show host years ago. It was worth the fight. For weeks, Patrick and the bill's author, Senator Paul Betancourt, couldn't get 19 out of the 31 votes to bring the bill to the floor until threatening over the weekend to throw out Senate tradition and go to a simple majority rule. It would be my last option and we would take it because People want property tax relief. They're more concerned about that than they are our procedural rules. With that threat, Amarillo Senator Kel Seliger voted to bring the bill to the floor. Seliger just was for keeping the Senate traditions more than he was against a cap on local government revenues. What we were going to prove today, that what is important is not the ideas and the tone of discourse on those ideas is power. Democrats tried to exempt community colleges and hospital districts from the cap, but their efforts failed. The bill was approved 18 to 13. The floor amendment as amended is adopted. This property tax plan is meant to work in conjunction with a school finance overhaul the Texas House already passed. So now each side has each other's bills to move together towards the final negotiations, and lawmakers have until the end of May to come with a final agreement. At the Capitol, Phil Prazen, KXAN News. The Texas Taxpayers Research Association supports this proposal. With so many renters in Austin, our Josh Hinkle asked the president of the association, Dale Kramer, how he would respond to people who say the plan only hurts poor and middle income people who do not own property. Well, I think the uh, individual impact is basically going to depend on your own family situation. Do you own property? Do you not own property? You know, do you buy a lot of things? Do you not buy a lot of things? I think uh, what, what we want is to make sure that folks understand how the proposal will affect them individually so that if this is a constitutional amendment and they do go to the polls to vote on it, that they at least vote with as much information at hand as they can have. You can watch our full interview with Kramer on our website, kxan.com. Just click on the Texas Politics page.